So whenever a database is designed or conceptualized, we try to minimize the following three things. The read times, the update cost or the memory or the storage overheads. And now we know what is called as the RUM conjecture. So when we say a database is designed, it means that we are trying to define how the data would be organized on the disk or memory, like how it would be laid out and all, and how it would be accessed. So be it any data structure or algorithm that we are trying to pick while we are designing this database, this conjecture holds true. Now, what does the conjecture say? The conjecture says that when we try to optimize the two out of this three, the third one is impacted in a negative way. So if you're trying to build a system that is optimized out of two or three, let's say read and write, then we would have to take a hit on storage or the memory consumption. If you're trying to optimize on read and memory, then the write would need to take a hit. Right? So in no way we could get all three. Right? So we can get maximum two out of this three. Let's take a practical example to understand. Let's say we are designing a database in a log structured format. Right? Which means whenever I'm inserting a record, they're simply getting appended in the file one after another. Now, if you look carefully, because the records are getting appended in the file, the updates is highly optimized. Right? Now, if we want to minimize the storage requirement, we give up on an additional index that we would create on top of this. So we are optimizing on memory as well. So as soon as we optimize on writes, we optimize on additional memory. If you look carefully, how would read work? If I am looking for a particular key, then I would have to go through the entire file, each record one after another, and then I would find it. So when I'm optimizing for updates, I'm optimizing for memory, I'm giving up on read cost. Right? So in no way, in no way we could get all three. So the read, update and memory, they three form a competing triangle in which one has to be given up in order to maximize the other two. So at max, we could get two out of this three, right? And that's the entire RUM conjecture. Now, when you are visualizing it, it's very easy to visualize it as a triangle. Now we'll take a look at different databases taking different or basically taking different trade-offs to optimize for a certain type of workload. Let's start with read optimized workloads. So when we talk about databases or data, or data structures, which are read optimized, which means they're optimized for low read overheads in which they can choose to trade off additional storage and write cost. Let's take a practical example. If we talk about the B trees, which most relational and a lot of non-relational databases use to store the data, these are heavily optimized for read, right? So that you can do a login read when you are reading by a primary key or doing an index lookup. So when you do this, we are taking up that additional nodes, the intermediate nodes that we would want, right? So we need an audit, we need an auxiliary data structure to manage it, right? And the writes would be accessible because now we're accessing multiple disk blocks to read and reach there. Right? Similarly, tries and skip list also falls into this category. So when we are optimizing for certain thing, we have to give up on something else. So in some cases, let's say when we are doing, giving users great read latencies, let's say I would want to give users a great read latency by making data redundant, right? So that I can support large number of reads. So in that case, I'm increasing my storage requirement, right? But I'm giving great read latencies, but now my writes have to go at multiple places. Right? So you are doing dual writes or rewrites in order to improve your read latencies. Right? So there is always this competitive triangle coming in. Now let's take a look at the write optimized workload. Now in case of write optimized workload, as we saw with log structured storage, where we were simply appending the key value one after another. So we typically do the bare minimum when it is taken to the writes part. For example, LSM trees accept writes in memory and then periodically flush it to the disk. So it's very write optimized because we are writing to the memory instead of disk. Right? But when we do this, we require an additional buffer and then we store it. So auxiliary storage requirement is added. Right? So you're optimizing for update cost, but you are now requiring an additional buffer or an additional data structure or an auxiliary data structure to do it. Right? So we typically get great, get great write latencies, be it in place or in auxiliary structure by trading off the read latencies and memory overheads. Again, forming a competing triangle. You get some, you lose some. That's the ultimate reality. The third, if you look at the space optimized, which means we do not want to give up an additional space, which means we want to be highly space efficient. For example, bloom filters, right? We want to be highly space efficient in that case. What are we giving up on? In case of bloom filters, we are giving up on accuracy. 
it's not part of read or update but again something has to take a hit so accuracy takes a hit because false positives are possible over there right but if i take a look at another example let's say sparse index so sparse index is hey if you create a dense index you would be having one entry for every single entry that you have in your index so it's not space optimized you reduce that so now we are increasing the number of lookups that you need to do to reach to that certain key because now you have to do multi level lookups over there so this is a case where you are optimizing on space so you have to make your reads slightly more costlier right so you get some you lose some these are space optimized workloads but there is a fourth one which sits right in the middle so we look at we looked at examples of read optimized workloads write optimized workloads and storage optimized workloads but there would be class of data structures and algorithms that fit in this criteria the middle region these are adaptive access method so basically the workloads which are adaptive in nature which sits in the middle and can adapt depending on the workload or the access pattern of it so these are flexible data structures which are designed to solve this problem right now you can choose to go deeper into this i'll give you few examples first is first example is called as database cracking adaptive merging adaptive indexing and again in most cases these are bunch of tunable parameters that you have which you can use to tune your existing systems that below certain load do this above a certain thing do this right but there are some inherent data structures that does something out of the box which you don't need to tune and they would adapt it on their own right but in most cases the tunability is what Uh, makes it possible for a database or a data structure or an algorithm to be tunable to adapt to any kind of workload right and this entire thing is a rum conjecture so it's not proven but it is something which is observed that's why it's called as a conjecture right so this is a very nice framework that whenever you are looking at any database anywhere where you are storing things you are accessing things this is a very clean framework to look at it that is whatever whichever database you are looking for is it read optimized write optimized memory optimized what it is it trading off and what it is not trading off like the strong suits and the weak suits it would help you make go deeper into the database that you are already using or whenever you are making a choice to pick a database for your architecture you can make a very informed decision according to that now whenever you are reading about any database try to categorize it into see that hey what kind of trade off is it taking what is it gaining what is it losing and then you would form an understanding to make the right decision choice with your database and this entire thing is taken is a very short summary of a paper called the rum conjecture a link that paper in the description down below but uh, go through that the uh, it they have covered some other things in details which i'm sure you would love to explore so yeah this is all what i wanted to cover in this one i hope you found it interesting hope you found it amusing that's it for this one i'll see you in the next one thanks a ton